Hey, Steve here, and welcome to this next episode of Processing Subscribers Images. Uh, this one was sent in to me by Stephen. I didn't get a last name, unfortunately, so uh, Stephen, if you're watching, thank you for sending me this through. You know who you are. Um, hopefully this video is going to teach you a few things, and hopefully you can kind of get what you wanted from it. Um, for everyone else as well, of course, I hope you uh, learned something from this. Uh, this image is a little bit different to what I normally record uh, my own sort of image walkthroughs on um, you know it's like uh, yeah so it's a really beautiful scene um, well composed but it's not your typical um, you know fiery sunrise or sunset image um, so yeah going for a little bit of a different approach here with this one but hopefully you can see by the end of it how the same techniques that I usually teach uh, can be applied in different types of images so um, yeah, I'll be using the luminosity masking panel in this demo. If you want to buy the panel, you can get that. There will just be a video, uh, there'll be a button below this video um, if you haven't got the panel already. Um, and yeah, I'm really using it just to help speed up uh, the demonstration of the techniques uh, involved. Otherwise, if you, um, you know, if you see me using something that the panel gives uh, the option to to do like for example creating luminosity selections and um, that is something that obviously is possible in Photoshop so the panel doesn't do anything that's not possible in Photoshop another way it just makes everything quicker and easier to do so yeah, if you haven't got the panel or you don't want to buy it then um, you yeah, you can use these techniques the long way uh, using them manually otherwise if you've got the panel um, then happy days this will be a really quick and easy uh, process for you so uh, yeah, with that said, let's let's sort of crack on with the uh, the demonstration. Now with this image, obviously, um, you know when you got like a sort of a misty, cloudy day like this, um, even though it's kind of quite a dark, or it feels quite dark at the time, the sky when you look at your images, the sky is always brighter than the uh, landscape anyway. So in order to process this image, what I'm going to be looking at is just adjusting the light around the image so that we can draw the focus away from the bright sky and bring it more towards the middle here, this, uh, this sort of large central rock around which this water is, uh, is kind of rushing through. So um, yeah, the first thing I'll do in this, uh, yeah, in this case then is to darken the sky a little bit and we can use a uh, simple curves adjustment to do that. And wouldn't you know it, I've got a button in the panel here which uh, gives us a quick easy darkening curve. So I'll just use that. Now, obviously, this is just a quick preset. Um, you can, you know, just create a curves adjustment. You can come and adjust it as you uh, see fit after you've added it with the panel. Uh, so I will just make it a little bit darker than um, than the default. So just looking at what this is doing to the sky here, I think that probably looks okay. That's a nice amount of darkening without going too far. So I'll just now invert this uh, layer mask command or control I on the keyboard and now with this layer hidden with the black mask I'm going to just reveal the darkness from this layer in the sky only and to do that we need to uh, load a selection that isolates the highlights so let's go for on the panel here if you haven't seen the panel before we've got this luminosity selections uh, section here which is basically a number of uh, buttons each button corresponds to um, a shadow, midtone, or highlight selection. So the five over here on the left hand side is going to load a selection that isolates the darkest shadows. A three is shadows, but not quite as dark as the darkest. One is basically the far left or the the left half of the histogram. So um, you know the shadow half, so it's a wider tonal range. Uh, and then vice versa, a one on the right hand side is a, is the right half of the histogram, so a wide tonal range and getting deeper into the shadows all the way up to a five. So with that said, I'll see what a three on the highlights end looks like. Uh, that's a decent isolation. The sky is sort of bright white and gray. Let's see if we can if a two would be any better, it gives us a brighter sky. Now the mountain in the background is a bit gray, so using this as a mask we are going to affect that mountain a little bit 
Uh, let's see if we can just adjust this using the uh, levels adjustment here in the modify section under build and modify mask in the panel. So if you've got a selection preview that looks um, close to what you want but not quite perfect, you can hit this levels button and you can just adjust the contrast in this preview using the, uh, the levels adjustment here. So what we're going for is a brighter sky and a darker, um, a darker mountain. So I think without going too far, that's probably gonna do a good job like that. So let's click okay. And now if we're happy with the preview, we can click use mask. That loads the preview as a selection, as we can see by the marching ants. I'm just gonna hide the marching ants, command H or control H on the keyboard. Now with a brush, with a white foreground, I'll just use 100% opacity on the brush. I'm just gonna brush into the sky here to reveal the darker sky. So let's look at that now. So we have, as I said, we have darkened those mountains a little bit. So let's look at this layer mask here now. So we've got a button here for show, uh, to show mask. So I click on the layer, click show mask. Now we can see here, um, the sky is almost completely pure white and here in the uh, in the distant mountain is a bit of gray which means we're darkening the mountain a little bit with this curves adjustment now we can actually use this same modify levels button um, directly into the layer mask so I'll hit that now and what we can do here is just see if we can isolate the uh, the sky a little bit more and actually cancel that. I think I need to deselect my active selection first. So command D and let's try that again. So it wasn't quite doing what I was thinking it was gonna do. Um, yeah, so if we move this middle adjustment here, uh, this middle uh, control point, we can move it up to the right just to really darken and uh, make that perfect isolation. And now if I click OK, that's made that adjustment directly into the layer mask. <clears throat> and then uh, what we can do just to tidy up these other bits in the sky, we can use the dodge tool. And if you have uh, highlights selected, then what that allows you to do is dodge the greys without, um, without dodging the black parts that we don't want to dodge. Uh, and then up here in the sky, top corner because there is black we're just gonna have to go over it a few times just to get rid of it okay so I think that is pretty good so let's have a look now and here we go we've got that darker sky and this mountain here has not been affected in any way by this adjustment layer so with that darker sky let's just see now we've got the mask isolating it let's just see if we can make it any darker and mm, probably not with probably leave it about here that looks uh, that looks pretty good right now let's have a look at um, yeah before we start doing too much in the foreground I just want to recover the darkest shadows which are possibly a little bit too dark um, so I'm gonna add a, uh, a curves adjustment which is going to brighten the image and again, I'm just going to brighten it even more than the uh, default amount. And because what I'm looking at here is the highlight, uh, sorry, the, the shadows in these darkest rocks. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to try to make them not quite so black. So I'll just invert the mask. This time with the brush tool and the white brush. I need to load a selection that isolates the darkest shadows. Um, this will do, I think, um, because the main thing here is that we're not going to be brightening any of the water. So I'll click Use Mask, Command H to hide marching ants. Now I can just dab with the brush into these shadows that I want to want to brighten up. And it doesn't matter where the brush goes; I'm not going to be overexposing this water. Okay, so that will do us for the shadow recovery, I think. That looks pretty good. Uh, now we can get on with the fun stuff and start adding some contrast and really making this centerpiece um, pop. 
So we're going to do that by adding contrast, oops, um, adding contrast and uh, brightness to the middle, and darkening, subtly darkening the edges. Uh, so let's start off with um, adding a levels adjustment, and now let's go really far uh, with these uh, control points. Let's really kind of see how far we can push it to make this rock stand out. Now we can see here the water's overexposing quite drastically. That's okay. Um, actually, I think this adjustment, this contrast, looks really good all around the image, apart from obviously the sky and the water. So, what we might do now is just recover those parts from this adjustment so we can keep everything apart from those overexposed bits. So I need to load a selection that's going to isolate these uh, these bright highlights. Uh, let's go for a um, highlight uh, a selection here, number two maybe on the highlights. Click Use Mask. I'm going to press Command H to hide the marching ants. And I'm just going to brush through the water here. And that's going to recover all these overexposed highlights in the water. Without um, without removing this effect from the, the rocks surrounding the water. So that looks pretty good there. And I think I'm just going to deselect the selection, so Command or Control D. And I'm just going to remove this entirely from the sky, just with a broad brush stroke so that uh, you know, so that I can do it a bit quicker. And now let's have a look at what this adjustment gives us. So we've got that contrast boost in the foreground without those highlights in the water being overexposed. So that's good. Right now, next, I think we'll just de um, <laughs> we'll just um, darken, subtly darken these uh, these edges so that it makes this middle part of the uh, the waterfall slash stream slash rapids um, stand out a bit more in comparison so we can do that with a curves adjustment now in the uh, where is it effects yeah in the effects section of the panel we've got a button here that says contrast vignette and what this does is um, I just hit that button now and it creates a curves adjustment that basically shortcuts a specific type of curve adjustment that I like to use for creating a manual vignette with a brush. So um, yeah, it's darkening, but then it's taking this uh, the black point and moving it up a bit so that while it's darkening, it's not making any uh, pure blacks. So we're not making anything too black because of what we've done in the curve there. So just with the white brush, let's go down to about 40% opacity. I'm just going to start revealing this contrast vignette effect just around the edges of the image. And probably just through here a little bit more. So this is without a luminosity selection active. I'm just going freehand at the moment. And I might even run it through the middle here a bit. So let's have a look, so that's darkening slightly, nice and subtle does it. And again for a bit more pop, let's see if we can just make that middle rock stand out a bit more. So um, yeah, let's add that lightening curve, invert the mask, and again without a mask, or without a luminosity selection active, I'm just going to brush in here to brighten this and then maybe we can add another contrast levels adjustment so that looks that looks pretty good let's invert the mask there and again let's just brush this through just in this one rock in the middle so I I think, let's see how this uh, differs from the uh, original image that Stephen sent. So here's the before. 
and here's after so very subtle changes it's not like a massive difference um, but we're just subtly shifting the balance of light from the top of the image here which is where we're more drawn because it's the brightest part down to the bottom and middle which is where we want the viewer to be looking so let's just do a couple of other adjustments um, yeah essentially what we'll be doing you know, if, if this was a full image walkthrough then we would uh, you know spend a lot of time doing a lot more subtle adjustments all around the image um, to eventually get us to the uh, to the finishing line I'll just kind of do a few broader um, you know slightly more heavy-handed adjustments here just so that we can finish the video on time um, so again let's see what happens if we uh, darken a bit more okay let's let's darken this that looks pretty good um, and now let's take a black brush here just to remove this effect from the middle Maybe we can even darken the sky separately a little bit, well, even more than we have already. So let's darken again. And again, I won't use a luminosity selection this time to isolate or to uh, to restrict these brush strokes, but you could, if you wanted to, do that quite quickly and easily. Okay, let's go before and after again. Okay, so there's before. There's after, just with a lot more focus on that middle rock. Now I think, you know, I won't mess too much with the colour uh, in this image because, you know, I quite like how it's, um, you know, got the feel of that sort of grey gloomy day. Um, but, you know, we could, uh, let's see what an autumn effect will give us that will sort of add a bit of glow to the image. It might not work, it might not be appropriate for this image, but we can see. You never know. So I'll press the Auton button there in the effects section of the panel and I'll just invert the mask to show this effect on 100% strength. Yeah, that's a bit too strong. Maybe it looks okay about here if I can then just mask this out of the shadows which we've kind of underexposed now. So let's use a... Uh, well, let's turn the preview off. We can do this quite quickly if we just hit the five on the shadows end in the luminosity selection uh, hide the marching ants and now with the black brush making sure to click on the layer mask and the ice cream van is going past I don't know if you can hear that uh, black brush and let's start masking these shadows out just to recover that lost detail and with that shadows selection active we're not masking out of the highlights so I think I mean this is looking quite nice actually in my opinion um, yeah I'd be quite happy with this I think so yeah I think that probably brings us to the end of this demonstration. So hopefully you've seen a few uh, techniques and you've seen a couple of ideas on how to approach an image like this. Um, and like I said before, if, uh, if you wanna use the panel, you can uh, download it. There's a button below this video if you haven't got it already. Um, otherwise, I'll wrap this video up and say thanks for watching. I'll speak to you next time.